What are some of the things you look for in your dog when you know that they're getting bored or tired of the session that you're currently doing? I mean, it could be a simple thing as a dog turning the ears back or the tail down, down not wagging fast enough. It all depends what kind of behavior you're teaching. You know, so some behaviors you want the dog to be like 100 miles per hour going, going, going. Some behaviors you want him to be calm. You're always reading the dog. Is he showing me a sign or not? If for whatever reason I see something that I don't like, then I'll wake him up to something else. And, uh, and then, and then. This that away. go and get it, yeah. with no hesitation yeah. This that never quit, yeah. start that elevation yeah. This that process, yeah. this that in the making yeah. What is up this guys, welcome to another life. episode of Elevated Canine Podcast I am here with my co-host, Roel Guerra And today we are here with our, one of the, I think one of the top trainers uh, In the US for sure uh, You guys might see, you guys, you know, he's done many appearances, many uh, movies with his dogs, uh, Mr. Omar Von Mueller. How you doing, hey, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. Great. Awesome <laughs> to be here with hey, you guys. Hey, man. Thanks for uh, welcoming us to your to your house, man. <clears throat> Anytime, dude. Uh, Omar, so, I mean, I've been wanting to do this one for a while, man. I've, I've looked up to you for, for a long time. Um, you know, just seeing all the work you've done with, uh, with Jumpy and Augie and, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's been, it's been in a, I think for you, it's a, amazing uh, resume man with a bunch of uh you know a bunch of amazing dogs uh all the hard work you put in with them obviously shows everybody that sees if you don't already know him i'm sure you have seen videos of his dogs online somewhere or in but, movies uh, yeah, uh, yeah or in movies 100 mm -hmm. but uh why don't we get started man uh tell us a little bit about your story where it all began for mm -hmm. you and we'll go from there sure 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 well i mean it, it's been a hell of a ride dude i mean this just being the right the right of my life i really 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 enjoy this stuff uh i mean i've been training dogs since i was a little kid i've been an animal freak in other words since i was a little kid I grew up in Colombia, South America, until I was 16 years old, and then I came to the States. <clears throat> and uh, since I was a little kid, I just, like, I was amazed with just animals in general, you know, pigeons, chickens, snakes, name it, and, and, and I had it, and, and I had a passion for him. And then uh, <clears throat> I started working with my, uh, actually, my older brother was a trainer, and he had a German Shepherd. And uh, I remember he, he came to the United States, and so he left the dog there. And I was like 9, 10 years old, I think it was. And I took the dog to the park, you know. And, and then I just told the dog to sit pretty and roll around or whatever. And, and I was just, like, so excited that the dog listened to me. I remember running to my mom and saying, look, Cookie was paying attention to me, and she was rolling and all this. So I was like, and I just got hooked from then on. I mean, right after that, then we got another German Shepherd that he was Kaiser. And I will teach any trick that I saw Rin Tin Tin or Lassie do, I would just go to the park and teach him, you know. Who taught me this? It was just natural, you know. It was just natural to go and communicate with the dog and and figure out how to make it happen. And uh, and I did a lot of really, really cool stuff with that dog. And I was only like, well, like 10, 11 years old by then. So it's just been a long uh, a ride since I was a little kid and uh, never stopped. So from uh, from right there, uh, you were in, you moved to Florida when you first came down to the States, right? Uh, no, actually we moved to Maryland. Maryland. I went to high school in Maryland, yeah, in Baltimore, and uh, I would train my brother's dogs, my friend's dogs, and all that. That's that's pretty much, that was my hobby, and then uh, then I moved to Florida, and of course, right after high school, you're looking for to get a gig, where you're going to work, whatever, and I remember looking in the pages that there was some uh, canine academy, right? So it's like, oh, wow, they actually train dogs, you know? And I went to check it out, and... Uh, and I was just amazed that you could actually get paid by doing that stuff. And it's like, man, this is what I like to do. And I was like, so I went, got an interview and got the job right away. And like a month later, I was like the head trainer. And, uh, and, uh, and, <laughs> and uh, one month. Yeah, well, yeah, it was. It was just like the head trainer. And I was just training left and right. Tons and tons of obedience, protection, obedience, protection, go, 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 go. And uh, so that's that's how the whole thing started. That's and cool. And then uh, you first got into the sport world. Was it a French ring or what was it that you first got when you first got into like the protection uh, sport side of it? Because I know you did it for a little bit, right? Or yeah, for a yeah. Long bit. Well, I, I mean, uh, when I was in Miami and pretty much what I was doing was train dogs. That was just my my everyday thing. Obedience and protection, obedience and protection. And uh, I saw a few shots on trials and I thought it was a really cool uh, competition sport. And uh Sure, look, I started handling a German Shepherd from a friend of mine, and uh, we won right away, and it was just, like, really cool stuff. And then I got my Malinois, and we did really good with my Malinois. And, 
And uh, so that's pretty much what we did in Schutzen for a few years. I think it was from 1988, yeah, around 1988 to around 92, somewhere around there. Got it. Or maybe a little less. And then we started doing ring sport. That's when uh, Jean Michel Mouault <clears throat> came to Miami. We became really good friends. Awesome trainer from France. And uh, we put we started the Florida Ringers Club in my house in my yard, and then we got into ring sport and uh, it was just fun. It was good stuff. That's cool. And then uh, I know you had a, a bulldog at some point. Was that uh, once you moved back uh, to California or was yeah. it? Yeah, that was here in California. Then uh, I moved to California. Then well, after Hurricane Andrew and stuff from Florida, then I moved to Maryland and then I came back to California. I went. I wanted to do studio work. That was what I had in mind. And then uh, <clears throat> I was training dogs, and I was training this bulldog for a client. His name was Nico. He was out of uh, Alba Nuelos's Predator. And uh, so I had it for training, and the guy, at the end of the day, couldn't keep the dog any longer. And uh, so I kept him, and then uh, I was going to sell him because I really wasn't doing much with the dog. And then uh, a friend of mine came by, and he says, okay, I want to buy him. And I think I was going to sell him for 1000 bucks, And... And he wanted to give me 500 And I said, no, a 1000 uh, So he went away, you know. He's like, okay. Oh, no, because we tested him, you know, mm -hmm. because we had never tested him before. Uh, but he had seen a lot of protection from the from the kennel where he was. So, yeah. he was. so he was learning on his own over there. But we tested this motherfucker. He just bit like a shark. And I was like, oh, shit, I'm selling this for, for, for a 1000 bucks." And he said, no, if he would have said yes, he would have taken him. But then he called me back, yeah, I'll take it. I said, no, it's too late. You know, it's just, Dang. you didn't take it. So you I, ended up uh, competing with him. I ended up kept keeping him. And uh, yeah, I ended up competing with him. He did really good in shots. And he was, he was a really good dog. Awesome. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Um, but go ahead, Rob. Yeah, so the dog that was in the kennel, you said he had learned just from observing? Oh, he pretty much in the protection field. Yeah, yeah. because I never, I, never, I never did anything. He was just there. And we, we used to do a lot of protection around the kennels. And he'll fire up just watching us, you know, do the work and stuff. Got so. It. But uh, when I tested, when we tested him, it was just one of those dogs that they bite like like a it's shark, natural to him. solid tight, and so that's, that's really cool. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let me ask you this. Um, so you said you you when you moved down here, you knew you wanted to do studio work. That like you always, I mean, did you always have that in mind? Like I'm gonna be working and trying to get some dogs into you know movies and commercials or whatever. Well, th yeah, that that was one of the ideas that I had always in my head because it's my, I've always liked to train tricks. You know, just not the average heel, sit down, stay calm. It's mainly like, do some good stuff, some cool stuff. So all of my dogs were like that. I had my Malinois that was doing really good. And I was like, and it's like, okay, let's let's give it a shot. And that was the idea when I moved to to LA. Uh, I kept training dogs. I kept training dogs and doing other stuff and blah blah blah. So I wasn't really into it. But then I met some people in the industry, and I had a Jack Russell at the time. His name was Andy. And uh, he was really good doing the tricks, and uh, boom, that's pretty much how the whole thing started. Let me let me ask you this real quick. Going back, did you ever uh, like when you had your trick dogs? And stuff, did you ever do like Santa Monica and stuff? Yes, and yes, 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 yes. I did Venice. I did Santa. No, did, no, no. I start I started in Venice, and we get kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what 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 did that look like? Okay, what happened is that I was doing I was doing this. Uh, we we're prepping these dogs for a show in Vegas. Right. Uh, for this magician guy that he he has some dogs that he wanted to do a show in Vegas. So he contracted me and we were doing the work with the with these dogs. It was, was going to be a really cool uh, act. And then one day I was with my dogs in Venice and I started playing with my dogs. I wasn't even thinking about it. And it's like just playing with them. And, uh, and then. Uh, and then I was like, oh, this is cool, you know, because people want to give me money. And like, oh, you know, let's just do it for fun. And we just, like, <laughs> just like collecting money. It's like, okay, cool, fun. And then uh, the guy that I was doing the thing for, he got really pissed at me. He's like, you're not supposed to be performing. We are the performers that you're supposed to be working with my dogs. And I said, fuck no. I can do whatever fuck I want with my dogs. You know, it's like, you could fucking tell me yeah. what to do. So he was mad because? Because I was, because I was performing. And it's like, what the fuck? You know, like, it's a whole <laughs> different ballgame. It's completely separate what we're doing. With right. People. It's a completely different, different area. Gig. Yeah. Different location. So we kind of like got into a little argument. I said, fuck it. Go. Bye. So we stopped. I stopped doing the, the work for him. And right there, that was my pretty much my uh, my food. Because, that was I mean, bread and butter right that there. That was the, that gig that I had with the dude. So I said, you know what? Let's just fucking go make some money. So I went to Venice. And we got kicked out of there quick. 
uh, because you're supposed to have the dogs on leash. So I have four dogs and I had a cat. And so, so what, walk us through uh, that show. What did that show look like in the beginning? Well, in the beginning, it was just like, uh, it was hot. It was in Venice Beach, you know, it's like right around the boardwalk. And it was just like, I had the, the, the stools and I got the dogs to do some tricks. And I got a cat that used to jump through hoops with the dogs and blah, blah, blah. So it was like, okay, it was, it was fun shit. And then, uh, but then we got kicked out. And then I found out that in uh, Santa Monica, you could do it. In Santa Monica, all you had to do is fill up a paperwork, pay 80 bucks or something like that to get a little permit and do it. And so I started doing it, taking my four dogs with this stools with a bucket, fill it up with money. And I tell her, bro, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I was making like $250, $350 in one hour. No. Damn. Like and that? Just like that. Every day, every day. It doesn't matter if it was Monday, Tuesday, or whatever day it was. Even if there was very few people, I, that was my average. So it was just like a few hundred bucks and go home. <laughs> it's just like, and I was what? like, man, this is this is cool. Yeah. So, uh, so did you wear a costume? No. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, I, I mean, it was it was a cool show. I mean, it was like I had like five dogs and a cat, and I used to do all kinds of tricks, a lot of skateboarding, and then. So cool. it was just, you know what? And it's just like when I stopped doing it. I pretty much stopped doing it because I got busy doing studio work, and I, then I started doing way better in the business. And I just missed it, dude. I, I miss it today. I miss it really? today. I wish I could just go one day. And because just, you have to be kind of a showman too, right? It's not just like, oh, just the dogs performing is cool, but you also have to be a part yeah. of the show and stuff. But yeah, but you know what? It's just that it's it's really uh, rewarding to see all these kids laughing and smiling, you know? That's that's just, that was the best thing of it because you get, I mean, you get this line of people to give money and they'll give money to the dog. They get around his mouth, jump through a hoop, put it in the bucket, come back. And everybody's just laughing, and I got a bunch of videos on that. And it's just you see all these little kids that they're so excited. We need to bring that back, bro. You know, there's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't have time getting too old for that crap. Like, <laughs> Way but you know what? It, it was really fun. You it was a lot of fun. You you produce it and train the dogs, and I'll go over there and be the show <laughs> bro. I'll dress up. <laughs> it was it was it was fun, dude. It was it was fun to see all these people laugh, all these little kids, and and because that's all you see It's just people smiling and, and and enjoying what the dogs were doing. So that's that's super cool, man. Yeah. So uh, let, let's go into um, your studio work. Do you remember what your first one was, like your first gig? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, you never forget that. Uh, the first gig that I actually got was for a pilot for a movie. Never went nowhere. We did it in Yosemite. And that was with my Jack Russell. And uh, that was the first one that I, was, I can say, okay, went. Oh, no, never mind. I did a couple of commercials in Florida when I had Carlo for beer commercials mm -hmm. and stuff like that, catching the frisbee. But that was not, was not that I was in the business. It was just that... They, they call me and contract me to do it. Yeah, but here it was the the pilot, and then I had uh, we did a couple commercials. Yeah, actually we did a really good commercial with a Chevy van, Chevy van stuff that won a bunch of our awards because oh, yeah? the dog did really good, and uh, we had a movie that it was uh, Orange County, with a uh, Black Jack Black and uh, some other people. And uh, that was our first movie that got we it. did. And uh, what dog was that? That was Andy. That was yeah. Andy we did. It. I did a lot of Jack. that's that's Andy is the one that I pretty much started with and uh, and and did a lot of stuff. Really, I thought it was Augie for some reason, but no, that was no. The Augie was way after. All right, man. So uh, you you, uh, you said your first one. What was his name? Your first dog? Andy. 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 Yeah. All right. And then uh, when did uh, what was your next one after that? Like your uh. Well, after Andy, I mean, I've, I've always had quite a few dogs. Uh, Andy was like the main one, the first one that I started doing a studio work with, and uh, then I had uh, <clears throat> then I had Gordo, which was an American Bulldog, and Loca, and Lacey, and Brandon, and and then Augie came alone. I had Chata also, a little uh, pug. So I had a whole gang of man. Them. So Just, you've basically been doing, I mean, even from my knowledge. You you were doing it way before. I mean, I I I got I learned about you when I think Augie was. Uh, mm -hmm. So that was probably what twelve years ago or something. Yeah, Augie. Uh, yeah, yeah, around twelve, a little bit more than that. But you've already been doing it years before that uh, yeah, studio been, work and everything. It's been a while. That's cool, man. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's just for people out there listening. You know, it doesn't just happen from one day to another. It takes a lot no, of it, a it, lot of work. Yeah. So, uh, your, so your inspiration was Rin Tin Tin, Lassie, and that's what got you into 
teaching the dogs tricks more so than than like your basic sit stay. Yeah, totally. I mean, heel. Lassie was like my. I mean, I was a little kid, and you see Lassie and Timmy going and doing their stuff, and it's just like. And it was just awesome. It's just like, and as you get into a business and all that kind of stuff, then you start realizing how all the tricks were done and yeah. and how many dogs they use and all that kind of stuff. So, so for you, it was a lot of trial and error. I'm gonna try to get this dog to do this, and and then it was yeah. finding and choosing what worked. Because for me, everything I learned, I had something to reference. Mm -hmm. I had somebody to ask how to do it, or I had YouTube videos mm -hmm. or Instagram videos. Right. Um, but you said you started way back in the in the eighties. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, like it's uh. I like what I, the main thing that I like about training is the process of learning yes. how to train. Yes. Okay. Like it's uh I don't like to know how it's done. Got it. You like, are, you like to figure it I, out. I like to figure it out because that's that's where I get my kicks. That's where I that's where I like. Okay, I need to teach my dog how to pick up poop. You're like let a math scientist. Let me, let me think about it exactly. Yeah. It's like and that that's since I was a little kid because I mean when I was a little kid I had pigeons for example. Yeah. And. Uh, and if they couldn't fly because we cut the, the, the main uh, feathers at the end of the wings, you know, the, the main five, five feathers, and they can fly. So I used to make up wings with uh, cardboard and shit like that and figure out how to glue it and, and see how it would work. And, and brr, sure enough, it will fly. Like, no. Brr, and then brr, <laughs> it will break and come down. And like, what? So, yeah, it's just nice. like I like to experiment with props. Yeah, and that's something I wanted to talk to you about, man. Like, Because, uh, you know, we... Uh, when you start dog training, uh, you start learning like different methods, right? And everybody's like, you have to mark when the dog does this, and and like you know what I mean. Like they're very um, yeah. technical about everything. And when I see your stuff, it's like, I don't know how he does it, but he gets it done. Yeah. And it's, it 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 doesn't have to be like this like super precise thing. Like it's a lot about timing, yeah. feel, uh, the dog, like all that stuff, man. Like, c can you walk us through? And let's give an example. You just posted a video of your dog picking up his own poop. Um, can you walk us through that process? What was the behavior chain, a uh, chain of building that whole thing? Yeah, actually, that was pretty easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was because I already have the dog that can do it. Okay, in other words, that's that has been a behavior that it probably has been in your head and probably every trainer in the world. No, nah, I don't think everybody <laughs> thinks like you. <laughs> no, but I mean, they, they were like in the head, like, what if we could teach a dog how to pick up his own poop? And uh, so a few days ago, I was like, you know what? Let me let's just do it because I've been I've been thinking about it, but I just never did it, you know. So I was, let's just do it. Monkey knows how to hit a ball with it with a with, with the a club with yeah. the club, the baseball, the the golf balls, all that stuff. He knows how to put something here when I tell him. He d no no no. But let's go back then. Let's go back to where you taught that. Wow, there's a lot of behaviors together. So but anyways, let me, let me just really explain real quick. <laughs> so all right, so he knows how to do all this. All I have to do is put it together, and in five minutes, I can teach a dog how to do that, okay? But the really funny thing about this behavior that I really cracked me up is that uh, <clears throat> that I did it a bunch of times inside the house, in the carpet, but we did I did it with the golf, with the, with the club, and uh, like hidden keys and a rock. So I put a, a, a lot of different uh, objects. For yeah, the you were dog. proofing with exactly. everything. Exactly. So just putting a lot of different stuff and blah, blah, blah. And then we went outside <laughs> and I put the shit on it. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey said, fuck no. <laughs> you pick it up. <laughs> he said, fuck no, I'm not getting close to that shit. Like, he so didn't want to do it. He didn't want to do it. He was like, fuck no. He's like, he thought I was setting him up. He's like, because there's shit in the porch right now. So like, <laughs> he's like, no, fuck no. So. So it was really funny. He just didn't want to do it. So what I did is uh, I got a, uh, I picked up a little poop that it was in the backyard that was really dried up, a little tiny ball like this. And I finally got him to hit it. So he will hit it and I'm back up. And you would reward, as soon as he touches it, you reward that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, so he started touching and he's got to get him more comfortable. So it took me a couple of days to get him comfortable to do that. But uh, the training, the, the a, a to Z Behavior, it was easy. It was, it was just like one, two, three. Show him, and he's done. <laughs> but the, uh, but the, hey, when you guys go watch this video, you guys are hearing him say that it's all easy. You gonna, <laughs> but that's experience talking right yeah, there. Yeah. But uh, no, it was, it was. He didn't want to touch a shit. That he was like, that's no, funny. you pick it up. It's like no, like. But once he got used to it, it was, it was good enough actually. And the really cool thing about it is that, just before I filmed the video, that was a couple of days ago. <clears throat> I was training with the dog, right? And uh, so the, the poop, the one that you see that he's picking up, 
I left it out in the sun for a while, so it will dry up really good because I, and it was a mess. It's like when you try to hit it, it would break it and shit like that. So like, so I let it dry in the sun really nice, <laughs> <coughs> and uh, so the poop is here, right? And uh, so I was telling him to go and put it right next to the poop, and he put the the scooper on top like this, and he rolled back. And the shit ro- rolls back into the scooper, like like a soccer ball that you go like this. It happened by accident. And it, yeah, it was just like a roll. He rolled it and it went right in. And I'm like, fuck, that was awesome. But I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have the, <laughs> I didn't have the camera rolling, so I, I, could, I didn't get it. But it was just like really cool. That's and then, and then again, it's just that this the hitting it with the thing looks better. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I mean, it's cool just <laughs> listening to like uh, how geeked out you get about like little things like that. But I think not many trainers think about all the things that dogs could actually do yeah and they see it as like this big monument like for like for somebody to see a dog clean up for, for you it's like oh that's is easy yeah but for a regular person is like yo that must have taken and it did take a long time because you had all, all the yeah you have to all, all the, the links behaviors. you had all the behaviors already that you <clears throat> could put it together but uh, why don't we go back why don't we go to like a what is one of your one of the behaviors that you were like, man, this was tough, but you finally got it done? One of the most exciting behaviors that you have taught a dog to yeah. do. I think, in my opinion, probably the, the the one that I get the most kick out of it is the skateboarding, <clears throat> because uh, I started up with a uh, shit. I started that a long time ago. I, I thought I was the the first one that started skateboarding because I never saw anybody doing it. I just do. I was doing it with uh, with Pete uh, Jack Russell that I had, and then I saw in the internet uh, Tyson came out. And then Tillman came out. So I don't know if I started before they did or not, but it was right around there. But I was doing ramps and all kinds of cool stuff with, with, with Pete. And uh, <clears throat> Like he would be on a ramp on a skateboard? <clears throat> uh, yeah, but it was just, he was being pulled around and stuff like that. But then I, put, then I started with, with Jumpy. Jumpy is a whole different ball game. That dude's a legend. Yeah. That, if you guys if you guys haven't seen Jumpy man, you guys better look him up. All you have to do is Google Jumpy the dog anyway. He pops up. <laughs> a little humble but, uh, brag, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's, he's fucking the dog is incredible. Yeah, but I he mean, was. when I started working with him, I was like, okay, maybe let me see if he can jump off a curb. Wow, big deal. Okay, like then he'll do something else and something else. And uh, I mean, I used to go, I used to go sneaking uh, in uh, skateboarding parks because. Uh, <clears throat> You can't go when there's too many kids, you know. They can, right. you can get they can get hurt or something or blah blah. And uh Jumpy was doing half pipes, I mean <clears throat> yeah, uh, what you might call yeah. it? Bowls. Mm-hmm. Bowls. Mm-hmm. Twelve feet high. Wow. Twelve feet high, down all the way to the other rim, turn around and go around like that. No. Yeah. You got that on video? I got, I got on video, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh Dang. and not just that. I mean it's just like there were a couple of times that 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 I was not filming because I'm training that this dog actually turned in the air as the skateboard is up in the air and just go whang, and it's like fuck, you know that Yeah. And, uh, but anyways, it took time. But the cool thing about the whole skateboarding thing that I really like is that it, they love it, bro. This is like this is like a shoots on dog watching a sleeve. Really, you drop. Yeah, it's like a tread, like a dog that wants to get on the tr- on the Yeah, yeah. I, dro- yeah. I drop the skateboard and they just go, boom, 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 and they go, 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 nonstop. I gotta pull them off because they'll get it. You know, they can get a heat stroke or something. So, that's the cool thing. I mean, it takes time. It takes time to build a dog to like something and to pull him out at the right timing, so so the dog doesn't get burned out and all that kind of stuff. And it takes time to teach the dog to steer, to go left, to go right, not to crash, and so on. And uh, so, but it's, it's it's like a hobby. It's just, yeah, it's, and you, but you have to be really. I mean, you really have to think outside the box when you're teaching. I mean, all the stuff that you teach. I think, uh, you know, you gotta figure out like how can I make this dog do it by almost like where by accident where I could capture it and keep doing it over and over and over Absolutely. again. Right. So yeah. it's kind of a little bit of reshaping uh, with, with some guidance. With, yeah, well, that's what it sounds like. Well, that's a, that's like 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 you say. You know, you gotta wait for a right moment. Be you know, pay and reward the dog and 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 that kind of stuff. But it's a uh, it takes a lot of repetition. Like you can say, it's thinking outside the box, that has been my thing since I was a kid. Yeah, I know. I always just try to think, like, uh, if I see something, uh, a behavior being done somehow, just think a different way to do it. Yeah. You know, when I was doing shoots and my dog was retrieving articles, uh, if my dog, I could tell him to go around the blind because it was legal. I could tell him to send to blind one and the dog will stay spinning around blind one, go to the next one, go to it, and he'll just go around the blind as many times as I told him and call him. So always thinking of different ways of doing stuff. Uh, marks. I do, I've done marks and table training since so many years ago where nobody was doing it. 
And now you see everybody's using props. Everybody's using props to keep the dog straight, to stay on the mark, to do this. All that shit I used to do it many, many years ago. And I was just uh, not necessarily on shoots, but in a lot of different stuff. Yeah. You know, so you're an innovator, man. But it's, 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 it's learn. I, I love using props. It, it's funny that uh, you mentioned that this guy messaged me like, like uh, maybe about a couple months ago, right? He's like a, a new, getting into dog training and stuff. And he goes, Hey, man, look what I figured out. This has helped me out a lot with, uh, I forgot what it was. And it was a, a stick with a hot dog at the end. <laughs> and I'm like, Bro, you haven't seen Omar? He's like, I thought I was coming up with this. I'm like, nah, bro. I was like, Omar been doing this. <laughs> yeah, that's an old one. Yeah, it's where everybody's been doing that one. But uh, but but yeah, man. I mean, uh, you know, like the what is that long stick? And you put the the hot dog at the end. And yeah. That's basically just to be able to guide, like, lure them away from you instead yes. of being yes. right next to you. Yeah, that's a tool that we use a lot in studio work. That's a, everybody that does studio work. They they know that the bait stick because we use it a lot. And it's good to teach the dog to look here, look there, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's got it. I didn't invent that. That's a, that's been yeah. That's no, been I know. That's, that's where I saw it first. Though. That's where I saw it first, though. Yeah. Um, why don't we talk about uh? I mean, let's keep talking about Jumpy a little bit, man. Um, did you have him as a puppy? What what, what was the story with him? Yeah, Jumpy was. I wanted to get a border collie. That was like, I just wanted a border collie. I want to do some frisbee work and play with them, and they're really good working dogs. And this guy in Craigslist had a border collie puppy, puppy. <clears throat> so uh, I called the guy up, and he's like, "Okay, let's meet." He was gonna sign for a couple hundred bucks. So when I get there, it's like, "Bro, this is not a border collie. This is a mutt." <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, "No, my dad got it from a farm," and blah. I said, "No, not interested." So I went home. And then the guy called me next morning, and he says, "You know what?" My dad is gonna kick this dog out of the way, out of the house. Gonna throw him, take him to a dog pound. He told me get rid of the freaking dog like now because the dog barked all night. <clears throat> and I said, okay, you know what? They meet me halfway. I pay you for gas, and I take him. I wasn't gonna pay money for that dog. He was dark in the face, and for studio work, we we usually like like dogs. Uh, so, so anyways, I went to take it just to get it away from the dude. You know, just like okay, I didn't. I wasn't gonna keep it. I was gonna. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I was going to do with him. But we've just fell in love with the puppy. He was just, I, I, he barked all night when we had him at home. And I, said, <laughs> <laughs> I understood what the old man went when he saw the puppy. But, <clears throat> but uh, no, he turned out awesome. I mean, it's just like he, wa- he had this crazy drive and uh, solid nerves. That's one thing about Jumpy that I could tell him, I mean, I, I could tell him to do anything I wanted. Anything I wanted, just like, boom. And it was just like, if I want him to go through a glass door and whatever, he'll just do it. He just, no fear. And, uh, and he will never second guess me if, if, he was, if, if I was putting him in, in harm, you know? So Yeah. So l- let me ask you this. Uh, when you have dogs, uh, I mean, like Jumpy, could you notice that he's just picking things up way faster than other dogs? Or is it, you know, like, is, is there dogs, in your opinion, is he one of the better ones that was like just picking things up that made it very easy for you as a trainer? Yes, yes. Yeah, of course, that they're better dogs than others. That's just, uh, of course, uh, good working dogs, Malinois, uh, Border Collies, all these dogs are high end working dogs. They, they want to do stuff. So it's once you get in, once you get in their brain and you, know, you start working with them, then you can just pretty much disguise the limit. So, uh, but yeah, Jumpy was definitely uh, a goader. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, Really, really quick. Really Got quick. it. And uh, other than the skateboarding, what was like the, or or uh, let's talk about maybe a, a scene that you had to do with him that you struggled a little bit, but you guys, you know, you had to improvise and, you know, Jumpy did it with, with no problem. <laughs> That's a good question. That's a good question because I don't remember really having a hard time with him on anything. Wow. Uh, he was, uh, <clears throat> we did uh, tons of shows, TV shows. He did, we did the series Mutton Stuff. We did, he was the main dog with 72 episodes. And he was working from the morning to a nighttime to straight years. So this wow. this dog, I mean, he was like a human. I mean, I could I could just touch anywhere. And I said, you're going here. Just by him smelling it and going one time, I could make patterns with him. Let, let's say, for example, they'd say, okay, the dog has to open the door, come here, open the refrigerator, drop some, bark at somebody, or it, create this pattern that the dog's yeah. supposed to do. A whole bunch of behaviors boom, put together. Boom, like that. I mean, it's just like, go do it. I show him, put the dog on the, or whatever he wants to be doing, repeat it two, three times, the pattern, step out. I don't even have to be like in front of the dog and waving or doing nothing. Just step out and go. 
Wow. And the freaking that was just going from here to there, do what he's supposed to do. I could tell him, like, uh, speak or bark or go left, go right, now go here, go there, and finish like like that. He will hit his marks better than any human can, can ever do it. So it's just, it was just incredible. So let's talk about the, the training side of it. Um, like, how, how much time do you think you spend <coughs> training a dog per day, for example, like a, a, a top-level movie dog like that? Well, I mean, I like to train every day. I'm very, very consistent in, tr in training. Uh, I like to train with food, especially the first year of their lives. I like to put a very, very strong foundation on them. So it's a for sure thing. Like I could say like a, at least a 90 plus percent of the whole year. I train every day. Uh, the time is really, it could be anywhere from five minutes to 15 minutes a session. But when I'm training something new, sometimes I can repeat could be three, four sessions of 10 minutes each. All depends what it is. You know, so. But the most important thing is to put the foundation, to lay that foundation that that you can communicate with the dog and, and just do just about anything. Where you guys understand each other. Yeah, basically. we understand each other. It's like, I know what he likes. I know what he doesn't like. I know how much to push him. I know not to go over a limit where I'm going to freak the dog out or burn mm -hmm. him out or anything like that. And then... And them up in a good note, and then next day or the next session, the dog's gonna be right there and keep going. You know? For sure, for sure, for sure. Ro, you got anything? Yeah. Um, what are some of the things you look for in your dog when, and and, and this this can just be a general in any dog, when you know that they're getting bored or tired of the session that you're currently doing? Because sometimes it can be five minutes, sometimes it can be fifteen minutes. What are some of the things you look for in the dog when you think he's you're overworking him? Okay. For just these tricks. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not just on tricks and obedience or anything else. Us, I think once once you start working with dogs, you get quite a bit of experience with dogs. You start learning <clears throat> their body language, how mm -hmm. they are acting. I mean, it could be a simple thing as a dog turning the ears back or the tail da down, not wagging fast enough or that yeah. kind of stuff. So, so it all depends what kind of behavior you're teaching. You know, so some behaviors you want the dog to be like. And like an amp, like 100, mile, uh, 100 miles per hour going, going, going. Some behaviors you want him to be calm. So, mm -hmm. so whatever behavior you're working on, you're always reading the dog. You're reading the dog is like, okay, is he showing me a sign or not? And uh, if for whatever reason I see something that I don't like, then I'll wake him up to something else mm. and, uh, and, then, and then put him away. One of, the one of the behaviors that I teach my dogs a lot, you've probably seen them on videos, is that I make him turn around, spin. And uh, <clears throat> that's one of the first behaviors that I teach most of my dogs. And the reason why is because they love it. You know, you say, turn around, spin. The dog says, spinning like crazy, go left, go right, and all that kind of stuff. So that's a really positive behavior mm -hmm. that they like. So, for example, I'm teaching something new. Let's say I'm doing a little bit of retrieving, force retrieve if I have to do it or whatever. And then, uh, then I notice that the dog is already like getting like, oh, I don't know about this. Then all I do is just turn around, turn left, bring him get, out of get, it. Yeah. Get, it, get him out, get him out of that situation right yeah. away, the, and finish him with something nice. There's always a positive uh, uh, emotion attached to that behavior, basically. Yeah, yeah, that and and uh, that's like that's that has been one of my tools that I've used always, and it's just, and it gets or speaking, same yep. thing. Like like when you get a dog speak, like, blah, 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 start barking. Like if you're teaching any kind of behavior and that you put that you notice the pressure on the dog, if you say speak, if you say the dog doesn't speak. It's like oh shit, you know, the, yep. you're going over. So. Yep, yep, yep. So. I use the, I use the spin a little bit in competition. Yeah. <laughs> like if I'm healing, like that's I've rewarded it so much that that's a reward in itself now yeah. for the dog. And like I'll be healing and like you know, kind of peak, and I'll make him spin real quick, yeah. and then he's like, you know, giving me that attention again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, the reason I ask is because uh, you talk about these tricks like it's the easiest thing <laughs> in the world, but I'm trying to imagine you know teaching a dog, and obviously the dog is going to get uncomfortable getting on a skateboard or getting on a bicycle, and the dog at some point that dog's going to start shutting down, especially if they don't like what's going on. So you know the, the reason I ask is because do you end the session? You know, everybody says end on a high note. You know, end on a high note, but <clears throat> obviously it's going to be tough for a dog to get on a skateboard and move or it's going to well, be tougher that, dog to sit on that's, a bike. That's, that's, that's where the whole trick is. It's, it's about not pushing a dog that doesn't like Past to do it. something. Got it. You know, you have to, like for example, the skateboard that you're saying, like, like if I'm going to pressure a dog to get on the skateboard, he's not going to like it. Yeah. But if I put the skateboard on the grass and I teach him to get on top of that and, and turn around and get comfortable on the skateboard without moving yeah. and then I start moving it slowly 
Or then I start playing with the skateboard, like if it's a toy that he goes and grabs it and bites it and stuff like that. So there's a lot of ways yeah. to get the dog it. engaged with the skateboard. Got it. You know? So it's, it's very, very small steps before we get to the point to yeah. where... It's yeah, totally. Very, and very, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I've talked to you a little bit about the... Because you teach uh, almost all the dogs you have right now to walk on the ropes. Mm -hmm. And people just see the dogs walking on the ropes, but yeah. they don't see what you did before that. And I know that sometimes you do like use like uh, two by fours or other things right mm -hmm. before, or you just put them on there into well, the rope. Well, I mean, it's, uh, I, I pretty much go straight to it. If I was going to teach somebody that does not have the experience... Like a lady that I've trained some people that the tr uh, a lady I think I was talking about the mm -hmm. lady that had some dogs that that they were they actually the dogs were not even uh, athletic, <clears throat> so I will tell them to go on a on a white beam, mm -hmm. teach them to walk the white beam, then separate them like two two by fours, let them get used to that, and then slowly you, once the dog has the idea that they have to walk with their legs like that, then you can. Then you can try like smaller beams or take them straight to the ropes. Right, but you so you just say you're straight I take, to the I take, ropes. I take, I take them straight to the ropes, and it's almost like you're pressured because obviously in the beginning they don't know what you want from them. They don't. They never seen that, but it's almost like through pressure they learn to trust you because you know how much pressure to put on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's, there's really some of some of the behaviors don't really require a lot of pressure. Like for example, we're talking about the ropes. Uh, Mona is doing the ropes. Mm -hmm. Mona is a dog that I rescued a, a month and a half ago. So he, she's just learning obedience, and and she's already doing the ropes. So uh, it's uh, it's pretty much to get in front of the ropes. You guide him, you lure him with a treat, and then you help him with her paws, and you put it here like this, and it's and then you stop it, and then you end it. Okay, if I'm gonna pressure the dog, she would hate the ropes. Right. You know, so it's like it's an everyday thing. You know, even spend five minutes. That's all you need. And I put it right on the ropes, put the, help it with the front legs. The front legs are usually really easy. They learn to go like this really quick. But when it comes to move with, with the rear legs, that's when the problem comes. Because they, they just don't know how to right. use the rear legs. But by manipulating them and helping them with your hands here, there, one step at a time, as soon as they get the idea, it's, run, it's gone. Do you ever get frustrated during your sessions? Uh, yeah, I, I guess everybody in the world, the, the trains dog at one point or you get frustrated. Uh, but... Uh, with the years of experience and stuff like that, I try not to. If if I see myself getting frustrated from something, then it, that's that's a good time to stop the yeah. session and 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 and, and, I think that's up important, and, yeah. and rethink what you're doing. You know, because I mean, just like I have overcorrected dogs, just like everybody else has, mm -hmm. and that's probably the worst thing that we can do. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I haven't done it in a while. Trust me on that, because I really learned not to do that again. From years ago, it's just like to look at myself. It's like, fuck, why did I do that? Go yeah. back. You always regret it. Yeah, always. and and it's just yeah. like that's that's like the worst that we can do as trainers, you know. And 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 I mean, I come from. I mean, I've been trained for forty years. So in the old days, it was nothing but pressure. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, not not that I'm happy about it, but that's but what that's, it was. That's, that, that's how it was. It was nothing but pressure, 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 pressure. It was like there was no food, there was no hot dogs, there was no balls. It was just go, 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 go. When I started competing in shoot zone, I was one the, as as I can remember, I was probably the only one that did so much motivation with with my dogs. Because when you saw my Marlon at work, and it was just like like the way you see the dogs now. Mm -hmm. And he was. I had a toy here, a toy here, a frisbee back here, squeaky toy under my arm. I mean, I was like, I was like, yeah. a, like a monkey playing with this dog. Yeah. Never the dog never had a prong collar or knee collar in, in, in his whole competition career, and uh, and he did awesome. And he was just all motivation. It would, yeah. I but mean, that but that came from you being you know the <clears throat> innovative and like you having different ideas to do to get things done. Yeah. Um. A lot. And a lot of people, you know, and I think that's what's amazing about the work that you do is that, you know, sometimes I don't even think about this stuff. And yeah. you're over there, like, trying to think about, you know, how you can make a dog do 10 different things in one behavior. <laughs> and I'm over here trying to get him to, you know, have a nice sit stay uh, in the heel. And, and but but it requires people like thanks to trainers like you and, you know, Bart and all these other guys that thought outside the box, they have made things you guys have made things really good and better for us, you know, the the younger generation of trainers. So, man, uh, that, that's pretty awesome. Just hearing you talk about that stuff is like, I bet you back then people looked at you like, what is this what guy is doing? This guy doing? <laughs> like, why? Like, 
why am I going to train with this guy when, look at him, he's, he has like a circus going on over there. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. I was in the shoots on field throwing the frisbee and every, every two minutes with <laughs> it, doing my obedience, turning around and throwing the frisbee. It's like nobody had a frisbee back then playing, you know, training. Tra- nobody training does on now. The train, <laughs> on the <physics> probably. <laughs> nah, they do. So, oh, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. some people that pay with frisbee and stuff like but, that. But uh, anyway, so it's just finding the way to motivate the dog and, 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 and make it all good, you know, like... And one thing that I can tell you about my su- my success in training that I would probably uh, give the advice to people, I, I really don't think that I'm that great. I just think that that I put the time that the dog deserves. You know, like, I don't need crap. I'm training. I'm just like, okay, I get my dog, I'm going to train him. I'm going to be... I'm going to be very, very consistent. I'm going to feed him by hand. I don't care if I get home at 1 o'clock in the morning from partying or whatever. I'm going to go out there, grab the food, put it in my pouch, and the dog's going to yeah. get trained. I don't care if it's just sitting or spinning or, or, or feeding by hand, but I'm going to be very consistent about it. And uh, <clears throat> for my experience, t- people that I've taught that they had very little experience in training, they did really well. They did really, really, really well to a point that people would look at them like, wow, how many years you've been training? And it's their first dog. Why? Because they put the time and they believed that they could do it. You and know? you were guiding them. Yeah, I guide them a lot. <laughs> well, but, it's, but yeah, but, but, yeah, it's, but it, but requires they, they have, the, it requires the time. They have to put in the work. I hear you. you have to yeah. put they the have to put the time. And also, again, like we we're talking about different tricks. It's like one thing is that people will say, my dog can never do that. You know, it's like, why? No, you have to believe in yourself. Do you have to believe like, yeah, my dog can do it. I can make this happen. Right. And and you're gonna do it. If you have doubts from the beginning, if you doubt in yourself, well, you know, a hundred percent gonna happen. A hundred percent. Why don't why don't you talk uh, talk to us about that that story that uh, we've talked about it off off the air, but about those uh those otters, those bulldogs. Oh yeah, that's and the uh, and how that you know I mean, how long ago was that? Oh shit, that was back in eighty four. Okay. So like I mean that's not some now we see dogs going underwater and you know doing things but probably not like to this extent right no, walk, walk no, us no. through this story right <clears throat> well here. I mean it's just like when you hear about English bulldogs swimming everybody thinks sink and die that's that's <laughs> that's, that's, that's that's what they're gonna tell you even the breeders or the big people I know about the English bulldogs are gonna tell you these dogs cannot swim so I was training these couples of uh, bulldogs on obedience. A boy and a girl. Uh, so they were young. Yeah. Maybe like around a year tops. A male and a female. And, and they kept telling me stories about these dogs swimming in the pool. And it's like, okay, cool, you know, big deal. You know, okay, fine, fine. So uh, long story short, that was, in, that was in Miami. And then they moved to Colombia. And I went down there because I sold some dogs, some protection dogs to them, and blah, blah, blah. And they had this ranch. And they had this huge pool. And they had this huge jacuzzi, but we're talking like huge. And uh, <clears throat> so they're like, "Oh, you, you gotta see, you gotta see the dog swimming or whatever," because they've been telling me stories about these puppies forever. And uh, so they let him out. And there's freaking dogs, a male and a female English bulldogs. They jump in the jacuzzi, and they start swimming underwater. But. F- Chasing each other. Like if, <laughs> like two dogs are chasing each other in a yard. These dogs were doing it in the water, underwater, running on the wall like this. Like, And they'll come out, catch a, uh, get some air, and go back on there and go, go, go. And I was like, fuck. Is this, is this for real or, <laughs> Easy. or what? Back back in those days, we didn't have these phones or all that. Yeah, time. it's not stuff I you mean, see. can you imagine this? Like, it's like, I'm looking at these freaking dogs like, and they loved it. They just they look like otters, exactly like otters. They just like go underwater, go, 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 pick up some air, go back under the water and run, chase each other, get out of the pool, go back in and, and crazy. Uh I told you the ending of the story, right? <laughs> yeah, you want to yeah. t- t- tell tell the listeners the, the ending. Yeah, it has it has a very uh sad ending because uh, the uh, they had the jacuzzi and oh they had a huge pool that you could like it was like very deep pool like like twelve feet uh, deep that you could throw shoes or whatever you want and these dogs were going on there like like otters like that's, retrieving that's retrieving like like otters they're just like they were fish it's just it's, that's the only way I can describe these these two puppies and uh, there was one time that there was nobody in the in the in the ranch and the maid opened the door or in the room where they were. And, of course, the first thing that the dogs did, jumped in the pool. But the big pool did not have exit 
for the for the dogs to get out. So the dogs died. Ugh. They drowned. Dang. They who knows how long were they were there and uh, they just they just died. They couldn't get out of the pool. That's so, crazy. That's uh, so. Uh, I, and I seen it's. So what do you think? Because uh, again, is these are things that we don't even think about. Like a dog could stay underwater. How we could stay underwater and swim or mm-hmm. whatever. But then you can't. Like I saw you post a video not long ago of a of a of a who was it? Monkey. Was it monkey? I think touching. Yeah. And it was inside a bucket or something like that. You had him go down there, keep his head underwater. Yeah, yeah. Is there like a limit right there? <laughs> like what's you the? Know what? I ha- I haven't tested his limit on that yet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there's somebody that does that trick. I saw him on on somewhere in the internet. I think it was. He has a Malinois, and it was like an American Got Talent type thing. And he has a Malinois that does some really cool tricks. And he has a bucket like that, a glass of water, <clears throat> and he tells the dog to put his head underwater. I don't know. He does it for 30, 40 seconds. I don't know how long exactly. And then the dog pops out when he says, okay. And so I said, like, let's give it a try. You know, that's, just, that's, that's the story of the things. You go and you give it a try. So I went and bought the thing, a glass, big glass thing. Uh, and then uh, Monkey's really good about, like, if I said touch here, he touches there. So I put something in the bottom of the thing. And I said, touch it and stay there. One, two, three. Okay, come on out. Give him a treat. Then I started putting a little bit of water on it. And five minutes, he was doing it right there. If he was just doing it. it I just said, wait, hold it. And his head is all the way in the water. And I said, okay, come on out. And he comes out. So it turned out to be, like I said, when, when you have the, the dog and when you have the communication with the dog, it's just anything that is seen out there is, is yeah. doable. I know. We were talking about that. Well, one time we were doing that the shoot about that. Uh, what was that dog that uh, he knew like a thousand different, or exactly. I don't even know how many different, Toys or what was it? Toys, toys, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's incredible. I mean, it's like, that's one of the things that, that's one of the reasons why I don't like to argue with people about training or what a dog can do or a dog cannot do. Because a lot of times we think, a lot of times we think like, oh, a dog can never do that. Or this is the only way to do it. And it's bullshit, bro. It's just, we are just scratching the surface of what a dog can do. Yeah. Right. That's just, that's just what it is. And that dog is, is a proven <laughs> it's showing you right there. Right. The guy knows like 1,200 new, like 1,200 uh, names of objects. I mean, it's like, I mean, if you would ask me how many you think, uh, uh, maybe 10, 15, 20 tops you're thinking right. in your head. And if somebody tells you, no, I don't care, what, if, what, if, what do you about, uh, about, think about 1,000? You say, fuck you, it's impossible. And what do you mean by that is like basically the guy could tell him to retrieve, you know, Mickey and he'll go grab the Mickey Mouse and bring it back. He yeah. can go and he's not even looking at him. Like he, he, he the the dog comes and brings it. To yeah, it's, it's behind it so, somewhere else. Yeah, and they tell him. Yeah, so he knew about twelve hundred. Wow. <clears throat> and uh, I started with jump with monkey, and I gave it a shot. And it's doable. It's doable. Definitely doable. It just takes a ridiculous amount of time. Yeah, it takes time, and uh, it's. I started with a few objects, and he started learning them. And and then Put a I little said, bit closer. Then then I said, okay, let, let me try. Let me test his for int- his intelligence for real. He was already down like maybe like eight, ten uh, beha- uh, ob- objects, and then I started trying. Like, okay, here's the wallet, here's the the glasses, and here's the pen, for example. So then I took the pen out and I put something new, a battery, for example. Okay, battery. I said, okay, give me the battery, and he looks. He realized that none of those two, because he already knows those two, so it has to be a battery. That's nuts. He will think about it, look at me, and I say, yeah, that's the battery. And he'll grab it. And uh, it was very fast, very, very fast. As soon as I started, like, that's really, amazing. as soon as I started really doing, like, like putting more and more and more and more, then is when you can really understand how fast they can learn and catch and, and, and it's learn. Like, it's like once they learn how to learn, it just becomes like yeah. natural. Like once they get it, it's like a dog that knows like free shaping or yeah. whatever, or he understands when you're free shaping. It's like, oh, the clicker's out. Oh, I'm gonna start free shape. I'm gonna figure out what what he wants me to do or whatever. Yeah. That that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He had about 45, I think it was 45, 47, and then I kind of like let it go and start moving to something else because I mean it's it's like you were saying it's very time consuming. I mean for me to really go into what. To teach hundreds of uh, of objects, then I will have to marry that. Yeah, I will right. have to just stay there and see how many I can go, see if I can beat the twelve hundred. That yeah, no. Other, and it's just you know what I got. I got a lot of other stuff to do. So, but it's, it's it was a good experience because I learned how the dog 
understood the new beha- the new objects and and then I tried names of Mickey Mouse and and, and little so he had he it. had a whole gang of it. That's cool, man. But it's really good. I mean, it's like right now it's like I, I haven't done it in tons of months. I guarantee you, right now I put glasses, wallet, money, like four or five four that he was really tight on, and he will not miss. It's just like fun. So that's cool, man. That's awesome. Yeah. So I I had the the privilege of working with uh, with Omar. What was it like two three weeks ago? Uh, yeah. And and I could just say, man, just from being being there, I know to you it's like you know it's just another day's easy work. But to me, like from uh, for a trainer that doesn't do studio work, just to see, I was like, for example, there w- there was a there was a thing that we that we ended up using where the dog goes and he pees on the on the dead guy or whatever. Mm-hmm. That wasn't like you, you never they never told you to prepare for that, but that's just something you had in 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 your arsenal basically. And when they saw it, bro, they went crazy. They're like, <laughs> "We're using that. That's it." Like, mm-hmm. and so, and and the, to me, that was like, that's why. You prepare, even when you feel like you might not need it. You just prepare for for everything, so that yeah. when the opportunity comes, it's like it's there. You know what I'm saying? That was, that was super cool to watch. And I mean, just everything else, man. They they, they tell them we stuff. need them, we need them to do this, we need them to do this. Uh, and all right, cool, let's let's do it. And you know, in a couple of takes, we'll just make it happen. Mm-hmm. So that, that that was that was pretty awesome. Oh, man. did the CPR on you too? That was oh yeah, fun. and he yeah, did. That was he, awesome. Yeah, he did the CPR. That, well, they went crazy on that one too. You I know can't what wait till that comes out. Yeah. So and we we can't really talk about what where what it is, but yeah. uh, but uh, but yeah, that I'll was CPR every a few months, and then we can talk. <laughs> yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, for sure. But that was that was pretty amazing, <clears throat> man. So yeah, it, it was fun. I, I Hopefully you invite me again. <laughs> no, you, you did awesome. You did I'd really, love really to come good. and watch if that's, if that's an option. I, I do want to talk about just just a, one one of the maybe one shot that or one take that you remember uh, from from a, a a cool movie or something that you know that you did. Well, there's so there's been a lot. Uh, there has there has to be that one though that you were just like after the end of the day you were like man that was amazing. Let me think. I can think of. I would probably have to sit on that one and think. I mean, there's there's been a lot. I mean, we did uh, we did a uh, once upon a time in Hollywood where we did the 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 bite scene. Oh, I the love that scene, scene. With, the, with the with the with the pit. It was that was that was awesome. That was really good because uh, we really had a good biting dog. It was not a fake bite or anything like that. This dog was really clamping, and the the uh, the protection that we had under the sleeve was tiny. It was from here to here, so the dog had to hit right there. I mean, the guy's with a gun right here like that, and the dog comes jumping from the couch, and he has to nail him right here. So There's no other protection? No. He has to hit just that spot. Yeah, and there was a crotch spot. bite, too, so, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah. In the, but uh, the crotch bite, they, they put some fake dog on this. They, fuck, oh, okay. they fucked it up. Got Anyways, it. So, uh, so it has to be like, I mean, the, I have to aim the dog like if it's a gun. You know, it's like I'm, I'm like on the couch with the long, with the long leash. The guy comes, he has to step in a certain mark, and when he goes like that, that's where it has to be. And and the dog turns, and he jumps, jumps over the side of the couch, and he has to nail him. You know, so that was many times where the dog was going for the hand. So it's like I'm like really aiming at it, and, and as soon as I see the what? dog is not gonna. Thing. I have that to, was the one you told me about where you freaking barely moved. No, no, that was oh, different. Okay, right okay, okay. But uh, no, I mean, it's like the aiming has to be like perfect and you have to be like ready and practice, practice. We practice six weeks. And then when we do it, there's no leash. So it had the, and it, and it was with the real actor. Wow. It was not, it was not a stunt. It How do you take that bite? He's awesome. He's the guy that just did Elvis. What's his name? Sean? What's his name? I um, I'm not really good on, on, on actors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <it's laughs> awesome, awesome. Good. Uh, Awesome, and he took the bites. He was he was he was game. He was the guy was really game to do all this stuff. And uh, but he took the right practice to get it right because, right. like I said, it's just like it's two inches off, and the guy can get bit in his hand or in the shoulder or something. So and he was a hard biting dog. So. Man, that was a uh, what kind of a pit bull? It was you a said? pit. Yeah, yeah. I got bit uh, by a pit bull on Sons of Anarchy. Man, I I got wrecked. I remember <laughs> it was like at least five or six shots that we did. Oh yeah. And this pit bull was just biting me so hard, and it was just leather. Yeah. It was just le- like a hard leather gauntlet, but yeah. the pressure, man, it was just, I was getting wrecked. I remember after that, I couldn't even move my arm. Yeah. It hurt for like a couple of weeks. Yeah. But, uh, man, I, I always enjoy um, like uh, studio work and stuff. I think that 
that's probably my favorite stuff to do that, that I've done, that mm-hmm. I've had the privilege of doing. You know, OJ hit me up a couple of times. The first time I saw you, it was with a shoot that we were doing with uh, Key and Peel, mm-hmm. And you did one with, uh, I think I had you Jack had, Russell. Yeah, you had a Jack uh, Russell. Dash, dash, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you, he had a bite like uh, the pants or something. Or somebody was running. And I remember, because when you don't know, you don't know, right? And, and I didn't know anything. And I was like, uh, oh, like. They make them bite the pants or whatever. And, but no, yeah, I remember you put like a tug in there or Under, something. Yeah. And you just like basically target the dog like this is what you're going to bite. And then you send the dog and he grabs them and, you know, easy for for you, right? For people that, that do it. <laughs> but to me, it was like, man, I thought, you know, I thought that they actually bit the, you know, the, and, and, but it's like, nah, like that's why I think studio work is so impressive to me because you got to have the right dog. You got to have the right training and you got to know how to improvise when you're in the moment. Like if something's not going the right way, you're going to have to switch things around in your training and the dog's got to get it sometimes, you know? Um, but I, I thought that was cool. We did the key and peel. And I remember the, we told, we gave the guy like a, like a, like a word, like a safe word. And we oh, were like, yeah, like and, and it was, the, and it was the actor. Yeah. And uh, we were like, Hey, if, if it's too hard, you know, and just, he bit him right on the in the inner thigh, and he just started screaming. I think it was like Mississippi. He was like, Mississippi, Mississippi, Mississippi. <laughs> he was like, I ain't doing this shit. He was pissed. Yeah. He's like, I ain't doing this shit, bro. That dog bit hard. Yeah. I think it was dude, uh, OJ's dog. And uh, but anyways, I was like, man, and you know, they always they, they know how to mess around with you know when they could move the shots to make it you know mm-hmm. work. Oh, yeah. they, they could always yeah. do that and get the right but, angle. But you have to know that as a trainer too what you can get away with and what you can't get yeah. away with. Actually yeah, when we did uh when we did uh Jackass I was, I was telling you about Oh that yeah, yeah yeah <clears throat> that's a good one. <laughs> we had uh Tosco. Yeah a- uh, owned by Adrian Adrian Centeno. Badass freaking dog. He could bite hard. And uh so he was supposed to bite him in the ass when you're hanging from uh, from the telephone pole. So I did the training with the suit. So I will get on top of the on a fence, and he'll send it because the dog never bit the uh, bit the body, and he's a he's a leg dog or an arm or whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> so we had to get him that. In the beginning, he was actually not going for the body; he was trying to go for the for the leg. But I was I would put him really high so he could not reach him, and then he was hanging from my ass really good. I feel I could feel him. I was oh that dog was, bit hard, yeah. man. I took many bites from yeah, that yeah. dog, <laughs> and uh, so he was biting right on my ass, and it's just like oh, bruising the heck out of me and shit. So, anyways, and then we went to do the the gig. And Johnny Nashville, he's fucking crazy. He was going to take a real bite. <laughs> no, he was. No, he, yeah, he was crazy just thinking about. He, he, he was going to he was going to take the bite on his ass with no protection. Oh, God. He would have got that ass ripped and I, up. I, I, I'm the one who told him I should have let him, but what the fuck. <laughs> I feel, I, I, I'm the one who said, no, 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 no. <clears throat> got to try. So we put this really thick neoprene, like a wetsuit type thing yeah. under him. And that's how he did it. We did the same thing in the Mississippi word. When, when it starts hurting, it starts saying Mississippi, so we can out the dog. And uh, so it was one bite only. He went and hung from the pole or whatever it was. And the dog went and grabbed him on the ass. But because he was really high on the jump, then he kind of slipped off the, off the ass. Yeah. And st- stayed with the, uh, with the neoprene. On, and yeah. So he got cut nicely. He got a nice, nice cut on his ass, but... He has no. He had no idea what he was talking about, man. Oh, he would have no, got ripped up. He he, he, he would have to finish the movie right there and and and, and start sh- start yeah. shooting in a couple of months later. <laughs> he would have taken. He would have taken his. Yeah, eyes have you off. seen that shot? He's like in. I don't a, think I like have. In a, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna Google, Google it. Yeah, he's something. on a pole hanging, and, yeah. and, and the dog. <laughs> they send the dog to bite his ass things. like that, bro. Oh god. Yeah, they're crazy. They're crazy. Yeah, no, that he would have got wrecked by that dog. That dog bit hard, so hard. His ass would have been shredded for sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess there's you know gravity will pull the dog down yeah, he would, it 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 nice, nice if, if, if yeah. it will clamp on his ass on his real skin he would have took, took a cheek off yeah he would yeah i yeah. mean the, the the cuts would have been just crazy crazy, crazy, crazy man all right well let's do the the show and sure. tell man so uh you had already showed it to us but what's something that uh you would like to show to the audience that's something that you're proud of and you want the world to see my head yeah <laughs> and i can grab it for you where yeah. is it he d- he did a Go, you can go grab it. It's right there. Yeah, yeah Omar did a, a really nice painting, man. When he was a when he was a kid. <laughs> Let me show him my painting, man. I like to paint. All right, <clears throat> this is a sunset. Here, let me hold it for you. Can you see it good in camera? Yeah, that's good. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Anyways, no, the co- the real good thing about this uh, painting is that uh, Jumpy did it. 
Uh, I have the video. It's on the internet. And uh, he painted the whole thing. You know, a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people that the dogs paint and shit like that, and they cheat. They cheat with the help. and this, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I didn't want no help. I didn't want no cheat, nothing. So every drop of paint on this and on the, on this sunset was done with, my, with Jumpy. I mean, every... Th- so every, what, what was the base of, like, I'm going to make stroke. them paint here or here first? Well, I, ha- I had it on the, I had it on the, on the board. And I give him the, pa- the, the, I put the, pa- the paintbrush on his mouth and start from the top. Go left, go right, go left, go right, go left, go right. And then I keep changing the colors and go here, touch here, go there. I mean, he's, he did a few really cool paintings. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know if you've seen the, he wrote his name. He did a, he did a, co- a bunch of stuff. So, but this is the only one that it was actually done on a canvas that I could keep. Got it. Because the rest of everything was, was done, paper. was done on boards and stuff like that where went bad or I had to erase it or something. So, Man, that's but, cool. But this is something that I am really, really, really proud of because it was just uh, it was just awesome. Yeah, no, that lo- that looks cool, man. That's super nice. And, he, and, and that's, he put that's his, his paw print right here. So. And uh, how old was he when he... When he, uh, when he died? Yeah, when he went over the Rainbow Bridge. Uh, he was about nine. Nine? He was about nine years old, and uh, we had uh, like three huge contracts for huge movies with him. And uh, it was cancer. Oh so man, he went really fast. So it's like uh, I don't even want to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, fucking. I hear you, man. That's tough. That's amazing. So man, tell us. Uh, I mean, we're getting to the end of this. Uh, tell us, you know, where people could find your stuff, where they could, you know. <laughs> uh, just. I, uh, I know you're doing some online training stuff right now, or no? Hey, actually, I'm not doing it right now. It's way too hot. And uh, but uh, I might start. Out, I don't know. I got a few, few projects. Sometimes when I get involved into projects, then I slow down on the training, and then I go back. So it's just. But uh, I mean, I'm I'm very reachable. I got a Facebook or Instagram, Omar Van Mueller, and uh, and and YouTube. So it's really easy to find me. And uh, like I said, the main thing about the training, you know, the the best advice that I can give about training is to have this <clears throat> connection with the dog, connection with the dog, and be original. Not just original, but be sincere about how you praise your dog. How, mm-hmm. but I mean, because it's like. I mean, it's it's not just obedience or or tricks or studio work that I've been doing. I've been doing this for so many years, and uh, I've trained from basic obedience to, but like when I train a dog for basic obedience, it's like I spend a couple of days, a couple of days with the dog, just bonding with the dog. I don't go straight to the boom, boom, boom correction, blah, blah, blah. No, no, none of that crap. Mm-hmm. I start bond with the dog for a couple of days. Very, very good. You know, make sure. Let him be. That, that way I can understand really what the dog is instead of, is before I do anything. And also when it comes to praise and rewards, if I, if I get on my knees, if I hug the dog, if I let him lick my face and all this, I mean, that's like a, that's a huge thing for the dog. 100%. That's, yeah. that's, that's huge. That's, that's, that's where, the, where the connection starts and, 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 and then the dog really trusts you and, and then you can, you can yeah. teach him, you know? I, I, so. Yeah, man. Hearing you talk about that is funny because like, a lot of people think, oh, like the connection is me giving the dog food, and no, it, and 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 in a way, that's one way that you can connect. But as a tool, but it, it's a yeah, but it's definitely not the main. Like if you see dogs connecting with each other, how they play, mm-hmm. you know, like to me that is that is what's cool. Where they're just hanging out, and you know, yeah. one of them rolls over, mm-hmm. and like you yeah. know, that's the type of stuff. And we and I think. As trainers, we need to definitely pay more attention to what you're saying right now. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, um, it's just like, I mean, balls, toys, foods, hot dogs. These are tools. These are connections to motivate and, and lure dogs to do about anything. Right. But the real connection comes when you're with the dog, when you're spending positive, cool time with the dog, watching TV and the dog is licking your face, just hanging out or or just things like that, you know, that is, it's, that, but it has to be, it not uh, what is it called um, for real because a dog can ne- you can never fake a dog I've seen a lot of new trainers come and say good boy but when you're saying good boy you're pissed yeah you're pissed yeah. because the dog is fucking hey, I, up I, 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 right now that you're saying it, I'm like I, yeah I've seen that like, okay, it's like I get, but, and to me you, it's fake I'm like but the dog knows that you think you think that you say good boy and you're so pissed because he's fucking up the dog doesn't know that shit no it doesn't work out that way the dog knows that you're pissed and, and the dog screwed up right so it's, it's that's the connection really comes when you really hug your dog and kiss him I know some people don't like to get a lick in the face I don't mind but 
But uh, that's I think that's yep. just probably one of the most important things. Like like Mona, for example, the one that I have right now, the puppy. She's a rescue dog. She came with a lot of issues, you know, a lot of sensitivity issues, shyness. She will pee when you get close to her and stuff. So, but I'm not just going to say, oh, fuck, the dog's not good. I'm going to fix this problem. I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this problem. I'm going to get wow. this dog away from all that shit. I'm going to show that that... that that that's not what it is. You that's know? cool, man. And I spend a lot of time with her. I mean, watch TV with her, play with her, let him bite the fuck out of me. And <laughs> just like, you know, just like slowly then I know when I, when to put pressure, if I need to put pressure, when to release the pressure, all that kind of stuff. And uh, what let her get away with and so on. But but the uh, the bond that we're creating is a very strong bond. And, and when the time is right, she's going to do good, you know? Yeah, for sure. No, and I think, uh, like, I saw her here that, that the first time I came down and she was like, a little nervous, like barking and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, to some people, they'd be like, oh, I don't really want to deal with that, especially for like, but movie stuff. But I think all the work and time that you're putting and, and the, like the obstacles she has to get that you're teaching her to get through and do all that, that just builds up the confidence where it becomes this relationship where like, cause like, it, it, like monkey, you even told me like, he's not like the most, uh, you know, confident dogs no, but if you see him man he got put into situations that a, a lot of dogs will not want to be on and he just did it like all right i'm gonna do it like yeah. dude they put all these things on him glue all over him mm -hmm. making him jump over sh like you know what i mean like a bunch of camera like you know what i'm saying cameras mm -hmm. and to me that's like yo you, if you really want to see the full potential of the dog, put in the time and really bond with the with the dog where he could trust you, mm -hmm. so you could put him into these situations. You, you know, somebody that you don't know guiding you somewhere is gonna freak you out a little bit. Yeah. But if you guys have this relationship where you know you can trust this person, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel confident that he's not gonna put you in a situation where harm is gonna be, you know. Yeah, and and, and, yeah no, and also the the reward or of making that happen. You know, for example, like like we said, like I explained to you, you know, mon monkeys are Craigslist dog that are two hundred dollars. Backyard breeding that really, I mean, if 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 you would have been any anywhere else, would have been a really shitty dog, right? Because because the dog, the temperament of the dog is not not like a high work, end up working dog like Dick or anything like that. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of little things that would like freak him out and blah blah blah. So it's like I need to work through that. I mean, it's like. I could have said, you know what? I don't want this dog. Fuck, I'm just going to get, go get another dog. And, 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 you know, but the reward of making something out of something that is not good, then that's, it's, it's way better. That's know? a so, reward in itself. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. And I always, I, I always like go, yeah, like competing with WAPO at the regional, winning the regional. That was mm -hmm. cool. But man, getting that, uh, Mondial Ring one with my Corso, mm -hmm. that was like, that, that was even, <laughs> Even better because, yeah. you know, it's just different, man. It just hits different when the struggles are different, you know, getting them through through things. So, yep. cool, man. Bro, you got anything to add, bro? Uh, Say something, no. bro. <laughs> uh, just like you were saying, um, the dogs know when we're genuine, when we're genuine or not. And I think that's something that, that was a good reminder for me uh, to spend more time with not just my my personal dogs, with the boarding trains too, mm -hmm. just building that a better relationship with the dogs and yeah, um, you no. Know, just another reminder that they're not just a number coming through the program. They're dogs, and uh, they want to connect with people, and we just need to put that time and connect. With no, them. Wait, so, yeah, and when you connect with the yeah. dog, it just makes it so much easier. Like I said, it's like when I used to get training jobs, just like the first two, three days, I don't do absolutely nothing. Just Bonding. hang out. Just hang out. Let him be. Because that way you can also study and see what the dog is. Because I mean, the, the 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 owner can tell you, okay, I have issues with this, issues with that, and you get the dog and you start correcting him right away, but you never really actually see the issues. Maybe the owner was wrong. Most of the times they're wrong, anyways. They're just saying <laughs> yeah. they're just saying things what they think, but it's not. So yeah. when you have it, you play with the dog two, three days, then it's so much easier to catch up in the next a few days after that than with a dog that you already have a, some type of bond with. Yeah. And then and then go. Yeah, finish. that's a good point, man. Because I think, yeah, sometimes people I see them putting pressure like just right off the bat, mm -hmm. and it's like, how do you expect this relationship to flourish mm -hmm. if right off the bat you're causing conflict in yeah. the beginning? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, no, it's like I, I remember this clear with a good friend of mine actually in Florida when we were training dogs. That we went to train this dog to a new client's house, and the dog came and jumped on top of him, and he went bong, and he kneeled the dog in the in the, in the, in the chest. And I'm like, fuck. It's like, 
come on, dude, you really want this dog to like you or to listen to you <laughs> if you just beat, the dog doesn't know you and you just kneel, nail him in the in the chest, you know, like if a dog jumps on me, I let it jump on me, bro. What the fuck? It's just yeah. a couple of days to see yeah. how bad the jumping is. Then you really know that that's why the dog's doing it. What what can kind of, hmm. what's triggering this dog to jump on you, whatever then then two, three days go down and then when you start working, you know what you're working on. Got you know? it. That's cool. That 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 yeah, that was good, man. Thank you for that. <laughs> I like, I, like being in the podcast, like <laughs> yeah, I, we it's, appreciate it's awesome, that. man. That was I, good. I feel like every episode, uh, I'm 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 getting some. Yeah, no, gold, this is this is good. This gold. is why we're this is why I'm doing it, man. Because yeah, I want I get sure. to sit down with guys like Omar and thank learn you. some more. But um, exactly. Omar, man, we just. Bro, thank you so much for taking the time and having us here at your place. I know that, uh, you know, your time is valuable. And uh, we really appreciate everything, uh, all the knowledge you dropped for everybody out there, man. It was fun. We got to do it again. We have a lot of stories, man. We have let's a, do it. Definitely. We, we, have awesome. we have a bunch of <laughs> yeah, stories. Yeah, let's, let's get, let's get some more. It's been a lot of years. It's been a lot of years. We have a lot of funny stories, scary stories. Name it. and We'll do it again for sure, man. You should say you win. Yeah, um, guys, good. you guys know that, you know, the way that we want to spread this podcast is by you guys liking, sharing, commenting. If you guys have any uh, questions, drop them in the comments. Uh, remember, guys, please share. Send it to a friend if you find some value. Uh, you know, that's this is how we're going to grow this thing. And, you know, us, we keep we stay motivated and keep doing this thing week after week. Uh, I know we missed last week, but we're back on it again this week. Yes, sir. And then you can find me on Instagram at Aurel underscore G, uh, Oscar. Oscar Mora Dogs and at yeah. Elevated Canine Academy. And Omar Vermeule or anywhere. Awesome. And we'll, we'll put the links uh, for your YouTube and your Instagram yeah, yeah, sure, in, sure. in our in our video. He's awesome. like, bro, I'm going to put you guys on my link. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> he said he has like 60,000 yeah, subscribers yeah, on his bro. YouTube. <laughs> uh, but uh, And if you can't watch the YouTube, uh, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, yep. all, all major podcasting platforms. Cool. So the next one, guys, remember, elevate your mind. Elevate your canine. Let's go. <laughs> Good deal. Let's get it. This that go and get it. With no hesitation. This that never quit.